Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things natural dyes and share natural dye tutorials with you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really beautiful marble print tie-dye pattern using natural dyes. This is a super, super simple, fun technique that's really awesome to do with kids as long as the parents are handling the pretreatment of the fiber and the heating part of the project. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what this looks like. I've dyed some shirts for myself with these methods and they're some of my all-time favorites. one of my favorite ways to dye pillowcases. They look so beautiful on a bed and it's also a really fun way to use up leftover dye. So for this technique, you're gonna need a dye. So I'm gonna use acorn dye today. I also love to use onion skin or avocado dye for these projects. So I will post links in the description box for how to make these dyes. You're gonna need the material that you are going to be tie-dyeing. A metal sieve or strainer or something that's gonna allow the dye to drip through and something to catch the dye. And a steamer. And now this can look like a steamer like this one that's built into the pot, but it could also look like a regular vegetable steamer that you put into the bottom of the pot. You just wanna make sure that whatever you're using for this project, you're not going to be using for food again. You'll also need a heat source. So the first step is going to be binding your pre-treated fabric, so whatever you're going to be dyeing today. And this really is the simplest binding. You're going to just take handfuls and scrunch, big scrunches. Okay, so I decided to just bring you directly overhead so you can just really see what this scrunching process looks like. So I'm just taking big scrunches. And that's how you get that really marbled look. I'm just gonna scrunch as well as you can. Now you can wet your fabric out before you do this part or you can do it wet it after. I kinda like to wet mine out after because that allows me to know that the fabric that is scrunched up in there is a little drier and it's not gonna accept the color as well. But it's really up to you. Now you can see I'm just binding with some rubber bands, slipping them around. Keep the scrunches all together. The traditional way, if you were following traditional tie-dye techniques, would be to do this with a wet fabric. But with natural dyes, because they are a little different than synthetic dyes in the way that they spread. We do things a little different. So that's pretty good. So I have my scrunch shirt here that I had scrunched and then soaked and then I squeezed out as much of the excess liquid as possible. The more liquid you leave in, the more bleeding the color is going to do. So it's just something to keep in mind depending on what look you're going for. And I had this old soap bottle that I rinsed out and put my dye into. I am really wanting like a super muted, beige, really hard to notice pattern on the shirt I'm doing today. But if you wanted something that was a little bit more deep and saturated, kind of like the examples I showed you in the beginning of the video, then you're gonna wanna make a more concentrated dye. And you simply do that by following the recipes that I shared with you in the description, but just adding less water. So you just want to cover your dye plant, whatever you're choosing to dye with, with water and coax the color out with a low temperature and add water as needed, but try to keep the water level really low. And that's a way to make a really concentrated dye. Additionally, if you have an old dye bath that you're using and you want that more saturated look, you can just cook 
out a lot of, evaporate a lot of the water until you have a more saturated dye. But like I said, I really want a beige, neutral, really hard to see pattern on this shirt. So I'm going with a pretty normal strength acorn dye for this project. And now you just get to place your dye onto your fiber. This is the fun part. Uh, you just squirt some on, or if you don't have a squirt bottle, you could just use a cup and you could just pour it on. It would work just the same way. So I like to leave a lot of white on mine. That's also up to you, however you would like it to look. So now you just flip over and do the exact same method of applying it on the other side. Okay, so my dye is on the shirt and I'm going to just place it into my steamer and I'm going to steam it for about 30 minutes to help the dye bond onto the fiber, and then I'll be back to show you the results. All right, so I've steamed my shirt for about 30 minutes to set the color, and usually I would let it cool a lot more, but because I'm losing daylight, I'm going to open it up so you can see the results and I think it's gonna be really muted in light and beautiful like I was hoping for. Okay, so I'm just gonna take care of the ends off. Highly recommend you let these cool. <laughs> it's exactly what I was hoping for. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll bring it over to you. Just a really be muted beige neutral pattern. Thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. I hope that it was fun for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below, or you can hop on over to my Instagram where you can reach me as well. Have a great day.